Alright, so fuck it, I can't make a video <laughs> without swearing and, and, and being all PC. And besides, PC is how we got here in the first fucking place. Alright, Ron Paul, the racist. Sure, Ron Paul's a racist. Uh, the one guy that wants to let people out of prison <laughs> for drug laws that are just ridiculous in this country regarding marijuana and other things. Uh, he's the racist. And who's in prison again? Who's predominantly in prison uh, for breaking the law, uh, breaking drug laws? Oh yeah, that would be black people and minorities. Don't and because like you're gonna talk about you know Mexicans like oh he's a he's racist against Mexicans because of his immigrant yeah illegal immigrants don't get benefits. Gee that's that's crazy talk, um, and yet if you're Mexican you're you know multi generational American in here. Uh, have you noticed in your community that marijuana and drugs has also been a problem, just like in the black community, and that predominantly uh, or disproportionately you wind up in prison? Now, if you're a nonviolent offender, the only guy, the only guy, Republican or Democrat, that wants to pardon you and let you out, uh, you know, family, family members, whatever, is Ron Paul. The racist, the guy that would let the you know minorities out of prison for breaking ridiculous drug laws. I mean, what black guy here? I'm just going over a few headlines. Uh, let's see, life sentence. The guy was a fourth time offender. He did in fact have two pounds of herb that God put here on Earth that grows. Uh, yeah, fourth time offender, life sentence. He's gone for pot. They also, it turns out, found a uh, application for student loans, which, of course, you couldn't ever get a student loan if you would use marijuana. Oh, my God. All right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Mom, she's a mother. First-time offender. $31 sale. $31. Ten-year sentence. Really? Black. Just, by the way, she happens to be black. Uh, Ron Paul would pardon her. Nonviolent offender. Wasn't selling with guns and drugs and being, right? And, and then let's get into it. The drug war. What, what, we got, what do we got there? We're, I mean, these cartels, Al Capone's got nothing in the current cartels. These cartels, rival governments in, the, in south of our borders, Mexico, heck, Venezuela, Colombia, and so forth, a lot of it is marijuana. But cocaine, so forth. And then, oh, don't look at that Operation Drug Runner we had going on, right, where we were selling guns for drugs and, right, oh, and Holder and Obama knew nothing about that. And it's not policy, even though we can show that this has been going on in the Bush administration, Clinton administration, it's been going on for decades, where we, the CIA and other people have been funding their operations covertly and, you know, giving these guys guns. And this guy, Ron Paul, comes along and would pretty much put an end to that with a, a pen stroke, pretty much. And he's the racist. Because if we decriminalize marijuana, whoo, the money goes out of it pretty quickly, and then anybody can grow it, right? Oh, and speaking of that, hemp, right? Ron Paul's for hemp. Oh, no, he's a racist. He would rather have American farmers growing hemp than Canadian farmers. I buy hemp seeds all the time because they're very nutritious. They come from Canada, not the United States, because you can't grow hemp in the United States. That's just... and. Don't even get me started on the big corporations and how they have duped the American public all this time and make a huge profits with other products, uh, but not with hemp because marijuana and hemp can be grown pretty much anywhere at any time by anybody. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> anyway, but he's the racist because he wants to let the you know disproportionately large population of minorities out of prison. That would be him, the racist. Uh, let's talk about the war. And that, that's billions. Billions and billions and billions of dollars. You can't even wrap your mind around the numbers. And and if... if I can't even talk. It, like I said, it just makes me crazy. The, the numbers are so huge. <laughs> I mean, it buys congressmen. It buys, it, it buys all kinds of law enforcement and prisons and so forth. And now all these people stand to lose if Ron Paul gets elected because he would decriminalize marijuana. And, you know, bad for business. Um, but good for you, you silly, silly Americans. Now, those numbers are tremendous. The war war, the actual war on terror, the wars that we've got going all over the place, the Iraq war that ended, right, even though we still have, what, 500,000 contractors are going to be left in in uh, Iraq. They're just, they're not military. 10,000 or so 
you know, act, active duty troops. Largest military base. Oh, wait, it's an embassy. Largest embassy in the world is in Iraq, staffed with lots of military. Yeah. How about we just bring those guys home? Nope, can't have that. Ron Paul's a racist. How about Afghanistan? Uh, heroin. Oh, let's talk about heroin. Heroin? Ron Paul might legalize heroin. Um, yeah. Because if we legalize heroin, the money would go out of that, too. And uh, there is so much evidence that you have to be completely ignorant of in uh, Afghanistan about us. That'd be us, USA, and our troops uh, aiding and abetting the use of growth of heroin and then its use back here in the United States because it funds covert activity. And this guy, Ron Paul, is the racist that would like to end the wars. And well, if, le if let's say he does legalize heroin, which, like, the chances of that are <laughs> pretty slim. But let's say he did. Are my kids going out and using heroin tomorrow? Am I going to go out and buy heroin tomorrow? It's legal. I'll go, I think I'll go try some heroin. Are you? Are you going to use heroin? No. So get over yourselves. It's ridiculous. Again, the one guy that, like, actually talks some sense, he's a racist. Now, the one place that I have to say that me and Ron Paul, we don't agree, is is on abortion, right? I am 100% pro-abortion. Pro, I mean, like, and like, not, and people say, if you're not pro-abortion, that's ridiculous, you're pro-choice. No, I'm pro-abortion. I'm absolutely pro-abortion. But, you know, you listen to Ron Paul and his arguments, uh, not coming from some religious zealot uncle, crazy uncle that they try to portray him as, but as a medical doctor... Um, it's actually pretty compelling. I mean, very compelling. But I'm still pro-abortion. Now, those of you that won't vote for Ron Paul on that single issue, really, the hundreds of thousands of Iraqis that are already born, that are getting killed in wars, and how many did we kill in Libya, and how many did we kill in Syria, how many are we killing in Africa that we don't even know about, how many in Pakistan, really, that's that, that trumps the ending of the wars, is the abortion issue. The, the abortion issue trumps the... Uh, drug war, you know, putting people who are already born in prison, and people are like, well, I want to make sure my daughter is able to get an abortion anywhere in the United States, well, I'll tell you what, I know your daughter smokes pot, and she can go to prison forever, so she can be free to have an abortion in prison, <laughs> it just, you, your arguments make no sense, and in eight years, he's not going to make it so that nobody can get an abortion in the United States, he kicks it back to the States, same thing with gay rights, I mean, no, he doesn't believe that marriage should be defined as anything other than between a man and a woman. Eh, okay. But unlimited right to contract. If you're gay, you're a woman, and you want to marry another woman, contract! Do it! Right? That's Ron Paul said this only about 10,000 times. Uh, you're, you know, a man wants to marry a man, you know, because, you know, some dudes want to marry dudes. I got, you know, I'm not like that, but if you want to go ahead, and Ron Paul talks about civil contracts and civil unions, and the states handling it in the first place, not the federal government, right? How is that anti-gay? Explain to me how that's anti-gay, where he says, yeah, get, you have the right to contract, and you should be able to, you know, do what the hell you want, because it's not the government's business to tell you what to do, right? The one constitutionalist, he's the racist. He's anti-gay. Okay, he is anti-abortion, can't argue the point. <laughs> There's no way to argue that point. But it doesn't trump the, the, the broader picture, right? And then I see articles that go on and on about how, you know, he's anti-environment. He's not anti-environment. But he doesn't think the government has the... the <laughs> and if you think that our, our government agencies are not in the hip pocket of big business like Monsanto and, you know, name it, uh, then you're being silly because they are. And some of these groups need to be disbanded because they're not on the side of the people anymore. And those people are very, very afraid of Ron Paul. What's the one thing they could dig up in our racially liberal society that now that we have a black president? What's the one thing they could dig up? Racism. Are you falling for it? Really? I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can't tell me you can't spot a smear campaign. And then I watch, you know, supposedly intelligent people like Rachel Maddow telling me that uh, he's an isolationist because apparently someone with that much education can't tell the difference between non-intervention and isolationism, right? An isolationist as opposed to a non-interventionalist. Hmm, wrap your tongue around those words. Anyway, the idea being is that, no, just because we're not going to go interfere all around the world with our military and wanting to bring our troops home, 
doesn't make him an isolationist. He wants to trade, 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 trade with them, trade with them, trade with them. Free trade, free markets. And then, of course, we come down to the biggest issue. Because all of this, everything else, this is just a smokescreen. The biggest issue is the money. Right? And I should have a silver coin here in my hand to show you, but I don't have it handy. Uh, all the money. It's all about the money. The Federal Reserve. Right? They stole all our silver in 1964. Right? They phased it out. No competition now from regional banks. The only people that print our money and then loan it to us at interest, the only people that can do that, the Federal Reserve, our central bank. He wants to kill the central bank. That's the biggest issue because that's all the money. Now we're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars, right? Okay, and who gets to control that? Who gets to print that? The answer to more debt? No, excuse me. The answer to debt is not more debt. He's the only guy saying that. He's the, he was Now, actually, there's a few people that are starting to look at the, that issue, but the main issue, and the one that they're going to try and cover up with all the other things I just talked about, is the Fed and our central bank. Because none of the stuff that we're talking about, the drug money, the wars, could be funded if it wasn't for our system of currency. Right? Sound money? Can't have that. Ron Paul's a racist. I mean, look into that issue, because that is the main issue. The main issue is the money. All transaction and all contracts in the United States and around the world are based on the Federal Reserve note. And keeping that, you know, world domination of our American empire, the way we do that with oil and everything else is with our central bank and the Federal Reserve. And just call a spade a spade, that would be Ron Paul trying to get you to understand that we need, <laughs> we need to reform this system because it's going to collapse. And then mortgage fraud and housing fraud, uh, all these, it comes back to the central bank, right? All that drug war, war on terror comes back to the central bank. And so the guy that actually brought it up and made it part of the national discourse, his name is Ron Paul, and he's the racist. Are you fooled? Really? Really? 2011, you can get on the internet, you have all knowledge at your fingertips. A smear campaign like this should be seen quickly and easily for what it is, a smear campaign.